everyone, welcome to a brand new video. We're on another disused railway and we're on the outskirts of Stoke-on-Trent. We're on the, um, the Market Drayton Stoke-on-Trent line and we're going to be looking at not one, two, but three tunnels, yeah. Um, so we've got Silverdale Tunnel to come up to, over 600 yards long. Then we're going to find Keel Tunnel, 321 yards long. And there is also a third tunnel a little further beyond that. Now if we can get any further, we are going to end up also crossing the M6 motorway, there's a nice bridge that goes over there and if it really is possible we're going to get as far as where the line would have crossed and I think it still does actually, it crosses the uh, West Coast main line and that's where the coal trains used to access the main line to get away from Silverdale Colliery which closed in 1998 so this side of Silverdale Colliery and Silverdale itself back towards Newcastle upon Lyme and Stoke-on-Trent this way closed a long, long time ago. As I previously mentioned, 1998, the colliery closed. Now, one fascinating story about Silverdale Colliery, and I've never read or heard anything about this anywhere else before. One of the spoil heaps, I think it's the second one, it caught fire in 1996. And yep, let's go out, let's go put it out. No, it's still burning. It's burning underground in the spoil heap over two decades later. That is absolutely unbelievable. Apparently on a clear day, the smolder does come to the surface. Now, you'd have thought they may have found a way to have dealt with this, even by flattening it, digging a hole, digging it out, building on it. There is a fear that that could actually encourage the fire to increase and even go down as far as uh, some of the coal seams down below. That's fascinating, isn't it? Okay, so the route covered in this walk is pretty long. We're starting just outside of Newcastle under Lyme, uh, right by Nutton to be exact. And we're going to follow the former track bed off towards Silverdale, where there was once a station and a colliery, and head on through Silverdale Tunnel. Then we're off to Keel Station, Keel Tunnel. There's a little surprising tunnel, very short tunnel, which was for Keel Racecourse. We will then cross the M6 before going through some really hardcore undergrowth that was really difficult to get through and heading on over the West Coast Maid Line at Maidley Junction. Now it was that long that I've had to split it into two parts. So in this first part I'm going to concentrate on the section from Newcastle up under Lyme, Nutton. We're going to go through Silverdale Tunnel, spend a hell of a lot of time in there, that's going to be really good before reaching Keel Station and finishing off in this particular part at Keel Tunnel. Keel Tunnel onwards towards Maidley Junction will follow in part two. Also worth mentioning there was Nutton Holt, the little station just back there where we've just been through, opened in May 1905 and it lasted as long as September 1926. So. It had two platforms, but a very, very short life. A little further up there's Crown Street Holt. Now this opened the same year as the previous one in 1905. It lasted as long as 1949. Again, it had two platforms. Up there, there's an absolutely ginormous quarry. But it's too built up and too many trees, if you can see. To even think about getting the drone up there. Nice little reminder. On signal post up, probably facing the wrong way, but still nice to see it. Got a Silverdale Church right behind it. Yeah, quite nice that. Nice to see something on the section which is a pathway.
there's Silverdale Church again. It's quite a nice one over there. Um, Silverdale Country Park over that way. And that is also the direction, well, the, the colliery was situated over that way. And the track bed continues on, taking a slight left, as you can see in, a, in the distance. Now it's roughly on this stretch where the Silverdale coal loader was. There was good sheds over in that direction. Colliery was over there. Now as we push on a bit further down, we should be getting towards the tunnel itself. So Scott Hay Road overbridge just there, things have just changed, completely changed, look at it. Got a stone wall that side, stone wall behind the overgrowth there and the undergrowth, traces of ballast on the ground. We're in a completely different environment now. Piles of old sleepers there look in the embankment being used to support it and then covered in rocks. Quite heavily ballasted still just here. Things are getting a little bit more interesting. All the remains of a signal there, a signal post and the brickwork behind it. Still got the heavy stonework on the left. look what we've got coming into view Silverdale Tunnel 684 yards and I believe it's a single shaft let's quickly look at this what's caught my eye bit of rail look not very long maybe about five meters six meters long and a nice bit of stonework leading up to the entrance so it's got seven of those reinforcement rods implanted into the mouth there dated 1996 so to think that that was done only two to three years after it was closed there's some old steps there look so that would have been workman's access might have a little run up there look at that i'll get the floodlight out when i go in still got the rails down too so let's just have a little look see what is up here if the opportunity does come about I'd like to get the drone over the shaft but I don't know really where that is so track bed and tunnel mouth down there that's a play park over there so we ain't getting anywhere near the top that way we're gonna head back down and we'll go in let's have a little moment to walk across the top Carefully. There we go. So that's looking back. I'll tell you what, it didn't look this steep when I was coming up. Right, carefully does it. We're at the bottom. Oh, it's lovely. It's a really warm day. It's about 18, 19 degrees. There's a lovely cool breeze coming out of there. Right. I think it's time to get inside, isn't it? Okay, floodlight on, let's go. So 
for immediately. Look at the walls. Absolutely sodden. And if we can cast our eyes to the other side, it does indeed carry on all the way around that, and then it just suddenly goes dry after about three or four feet. So rail severed at the tunnel portal up. Uh, there's the remains of that one. Must have been from that section there because from here look you can see where both rails are present and high ant. A smiley face, look at that. I know who's been here. Ha. Hi everyone. Uh, straight after not another sleeper. Uh, no message on that one. We've got rails now. Curiously, you see, it's double width. There's a single track. Now it was singled, I believe, around about 1934-1935. Even though traffic increased a little while after. Look at that big crack. You can see where it's been patched up. And it goes all the way to the centre. Look. look at that. So something from signal in this would be, wouldn't it? Foundation. I think it would be. I'm not seeing any recesses yet. The rails are still present up there. Rusty. So rusty for almost 22 years. But still no sign of any recesses. You can just make out the other portal, look at the pin of light in the middle of the picture. There's a first catchment drain. We'll please see if there's any more of them as we go along. Still no sign of any recesses. There is one, look. And some unused fencing, which was probably leftovers from the gating at the entrance there. So we just follow the rails back a little bit. Gotta be careful because I don't really know what I'm walking in by going in reverse. So hidden shaft, is that from from the construction when there was shafts where they may have bored down and dug the tunnel from underneath ground and there is a hidden shaft somewhere up there. I'm probably wrong. But that's just the four that I've got right now. It says it on the opposite side as well, but there's that arrow just there, that brick works. Quite deteriorated as well, isn't it? So it's the second recess on the left hand side. So that's number two. So I'm judging at where this point is. I'm going to say there's probably going to be about eight of them. Maybe ten. Bit of patchwork just here where it says 200 yards. Sounds quite wet. A little bit further down as well. I can hear a lot of dripping. So this section here is extremely wet, look at that. Mm. Got all sorts of creamy colours. Um, I'm getting ever so wet just here. It's, it's quite nice in a way, but look at that. I love colours like that. Go a little bit further. Right. This bit looks rather a mess, doesn't it? I apologise if we've got any drips on the lens. It's really coming down on me right here.
Is that some sort of um, patch up there or something? Or is it just the way it's ran down? It's quite a build up. Something there as well, but something to do with signal cabling maybe. Okay, I'm assuming this means I'm halfway. I'm in the middle. Equal distance from both of the portals. So there we have it, the only shaft on the entire tunnel. Really, really deep, isn't it? And quite away from the portal that we entered, really, really close to the other one. Although on there it just looks like a small dot, but I'd say I'm about three quarters of the way down. Yeah, so there it is. Brilliant. And that little bit of light brings a little bit of life. deep hole, don't really do much, nothing up there, nothing down there, it's just a hole. Another piece from signal cable carrying I suppose. So yeah, after witnessing the shaft, there's a nice long tall shaft, I'd like to get up there if I can, but I can't make any promises at this point. We're about three quarters of the way through, probably further, mm. and the end is getting ever closer.
So just jumping back in again, got some remains of uh, rail where it's been cut just there. Sleepers again from just there. We're out the other end, beautiful sunshine. I did have moments to wonder if the other end would actually be open or if I'd be going back or not. Here we are. We've done it. I'll tell you what, I'm not liking the look of that ahead. It's a nice original bit of fencing just there, look. So immediately after coming out of the tunnel, there we are, look. We pick the rails again. The other one is just out of sight, just there. I bet it's a jungle now, look. A jungle. Uh, plenty of insects down here. It reminds me a little bit of parts of the Welbeck colliery branch when I did that. This is going to be fun. Also need to keep an eye out for them as well. Don't want to be falling down any of them. I'll post through there, see if we can get a bit closer. Got to get over that. Yeah, I think it is. Yep, there we go, look at that. You can tell that the majority of people that come down here only come for Silverdale Tunnel because there are footprints down here. I nearly tripped over myself then. But there aren't many, and you can't believe that um, 22 years ago ain't that long ago, is it? And look at it. Uh, track bed's raised a little bit there, look. It's looking back towards the tunnel where we've just come from. See, I can handle it if it's like this, if it's overgrown, but it's like this. You can still get through it reasonably well. If it gets all fawny and nettly, then that's when things get to a point of making a decision whether to proceed or not. And that's why at this point I'm unsure if we will get all the way to the end of this route. But just out of sight over there, there is a, I think it's a fishing lake. It's quite a big body of water. I can see a few birds, I can't see any fishermen. So probably about half a mile from Silverdale Tunnel now and I'm on more of an embankment look. I was in a cutting pretty much from the start, even before the tunnel started. Now on an embankment, still got the rails. I mean I think we're gonna have the rails all the way to be fair. I don't see why any section of them will be missing. You see my route forward away from the rails, it's it's been trodden down by someone every now and then, which is nice. Um it looks like it's been quite a big party down here recently, half a dozen people or so. Let's keep pushing on. This is, this is, I haven't done one like this for ages, I absolutely love it. Not really liking the look of this bit. Nah. Over the trunks or under, definitely not around. Oh, dilemma. Right, I decided to go over. You see the culprit there, look? It's just come down. I'll make my way down there carefully. And looks even more like a jungle now, doesn't it, than it has been so far. Right. I mean, it looks like some I've gone under. Um, I've gone over. I've got to make my way back through here. And I'm assuming some people do turn back at that point because it looks less trodden down now than it did before. We got there, still got the rails, look. Ah, getting really, really warm. Some spent rail just there, look. Disused rail, lying on the side. 
but it's not from here because both of them are still present. Let's go. Yeah, rails have come apart at this point, look. They've been spread, the sleeper there in the middle. That rail's over there. This one's here. And we're going to have to stay away from it a little bit to get the easier route through. Climb over that. Right, so here's the remains of Keel Station. Originally it was known as Keel Road Station. We've got the one platform there, look and we could just make out the other platform on the other side. That over there is Keel Christmas Tree Farm. So it was opened in 1870. It was renamed from Keel Road to Keel in 1898. Now eventually it succumbed to closure in 1956. For passenger workings it did carry on for freight for a little while longer until 1967. So that's looking back where we just come from and I've got more of the same heading in that direction. Immediately after Keel Station, still got the rails on the other side, um, we've got Keel Junction with a line branched off in that direction over there. We're going to go straight down, there's the old station building there look. Uh, we're going to go straight down and look for Keel tunnel 321 yards long right back on the rails Whew. oh I tell you what that little bit just then was difficult um, right we're going to go over the A525 it's an overbridge the road's down there somewhere so hopefully we'll be able to look over the sides and here it is it's still got the uh, bridge number just here look number 25 there's the 525 down there you see it a little bit from that angle, I'm not going to go down there. We're going to keep pushing on because we can see the central metal beam, the steel beam or iron. The rivets on, look at that. Brilliant. See where the other track used to be there. I believe that was a tree, that line of trees here, that was where Keel Junction, the line shot off over there. We've still got the sleeve from the ballast, the rails have still collapsed at this point and fell on them sides. Pretty level ground either side, no embankment, no cutting. We're on the hunt for Keel Tunnel right now. is quite peculiar whatever it is it made something up haven't they out of old rails and rods mm. 